Joining me now is Jack, a relay officer for the National Relay Service. Good morning to you, Jack. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Debbie. Thanks for having me. How does the National Relay Service work? Yeah, so the National Relay Service, it's a service that provides support for people who are deaf, hard of hearing, or have a speech communication difficulty. It allows them to make phone calls, really any phone calls they would like to make. Um, you know, we, we may make a call to their bank or um, possibly Centrelink or even ordering a pizza, family and friends, anything in between. We're here to help. How do they, how do they contact you in the first place? So there's a variety of different communication methods that users of the service can t- contact us by. Um, probably the most common is type and read, which is sort of like a chat function, or they can SMS us um, 24-7 um, every day of the year. We're here to help. Uh, so that allows the user of the service to type what they want to say to the relay officer. We'll read that out to the person they're trying to call. And then we uh, relay the conversation um, that the, the, the person they're calling um, back as text to the caller. So our job is really to connect uh, the person they're calling with the, um, with the user of the service. Okay, so if, so if they're using, I know you said there's several ways, but if they're using that chat-based function, they're online and they're typing out and saying, this is what I want to say, and presumably in the first place, who they'd like you to call. So then you make the call, like on, an, on a normal phone more or less, and call that person. Um, and then what you, you must introduce yourself in the first instance. How does that sound? Yeah, so we do. Um, at the start of the call, we introduce ourselves and we, we let them know who we are and where we're from. Uh, so, uh, uh, would you like me to do it for you, Debbie? Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. So, when I'd pick up the phone um, and, I'd, and I'd be calling someone on behalf of Fizio, I'd say, hello, this is Relay Officer Jack from the National Relay Service. I have someone on the line for you who is deaf, hard of hearing, has a speech communication difficulty. Your call may be recorded for quality purposes. Please advise if you do not want to have your call recorded. And then from there, I would uh, go on with the call, uh, get the caller's greeting, and then the call goes on from there. How do people typically react? Um, I mean, most of the time we're very fortunate and lucky where um, the people they are calling are aware of the service, uh, maybe family or friends who, you know, they've taken these calls for sometimes years. Uh, and then also sometimes we're calling businesses who may not know who we are and you'd be surprised to know that even some larger businesses in Australia, big corporations, they don't actually know who we are and they don't actually know how to sort of handle a relay service call properly. Because we, we aren't considered a third party in any phone call, sometimes uh, the larger businesses do get worried for uh, safety and security or data being breached, um, which is totally fair enough, especially in this world at the moment. Uh, but we are not considered a third party in any phone call. So uh, sometimes... Businesses do get a little bit confused on who we are, what we're doing, and if we're actually allowed to be on the phone call. Right. And so my understanding is, though, as a, as a third party, you are not involved, allowed to be involved in the conversation whatsoever. You're just relaying it. But does the person on the end of the line try and involve you sometimes? Yeah, sometimes they do, but it, it ultimately comes back down to we're not a part of the call. This is not, the, I'm not, this is not my call. This is per, the, the user of the service's phone call. Um, so I'm not involved... It's completely private and confidential. So anything I do here on the line, anything I relay, I can't relay to anyone else. I can't talk to anyone else about. Um, so anything that happens in the call is private and it stays private. Um, and as relay officers, we are specifically um, trained to not discuss what happens outside of the call. And so you're reading out what the person who's hard of hearing is typing out as well to that person on the other end of the call. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So everything that does come through is verbatim. Um, so if, if you say laugh out loud, I will say laugh out loud. Um, if there's an explanation mark, I'll, I'll indicate that to the caller it's because we are relaying everything verbatim and we want to make sure that the caller um, gets all their points across and everything they want to say. Oh, this is fascinating. You're listening to Jack. He works as a relay officer for the National Relay Service, which is used right across Australia, but it's based here in regional Vic. Jack, do they give you any training about um, putting expression in your voice? Or are you supposed to talk like a robot? How does that work? I mean, as a relay officer, we, we really do not want to sort of get involved, but we do want to sort of amplify what the what the user is saying. Um, you know, so if, if they are, you know, 
angry or frustrated with someone, of course, we, we may adjust our tone. Um, but also we understand that sometimes users may be not happy with someone and we don't necessarily want to ourselves, um, you know, be, be hurtful or mean. And, you know, when we're delivering words, which sometimes are not very nice and we're, you know, swearing at someone, um, you know, we try to deliver that as nicely as possible. <laughs> so do you read swear words verbatim? hundred percent. Oh, my Absolutely. goodness. <laughs> um, and I've had some very unpleasant calls that I've had to relay, but that is part of my job and that's not my call and I don't have an opinion in that. So, yeah, it, it can be sometimes quite distressing the things you read, but you, you move on and you realise it's, it's not me and it's not my call. You must hear some amazing things. Absolutely. I mean, this is probably one of the most incredible jobs where you do get to sit there and listening to some you know someone's life and part of what they're doing in their life you know we are there for for the best days of someone's life Um, you know maybe it's they're calling a family member or a family member's calling them to advise you know there's been a birth in the family but then also uh, someone's you know worst days you know calling to let someone know that you know a family member's passed away or someone a loved one's passed away or um there might be financial issues but we're there to help and you know we are very empathetic as relay officers and we understand that you know we are witnessing and, see, and seeing very private personal information and often talking with family and members we do we do hear and see a lot so we understand um that there's a lot of empathy involved in our job as well and do you connect to triple zero calls as well speaking of best or worst days of people's lives hundred percent yeah so um as the as the national relay service we do provide the 106 service in Australia, which allows TTY machines. They're sort of like a uh, fax machine, which allows uh, real-time typing for both the users of the service and also the relay officers to communicate with each other. Um, And they can also uh, speak into a phone. There's many different communication methods for the TTY. And yeah, they can contact our 106 line 24 seven, any time of the year, and they'll get through to a relay officer who will connect the call to zero as well as um, most other communication types where they can access emergency services 24-7. On a more... <laughs> oh, Jackie, just dropping out a little there. On, on a more boring and practical note, um, what happens when, I, you know, you often, I imagine, call businesses or government services on behalf of people? What happens when they get put on hold? We're on hold too. <laughs> so if you're on a hold to a business for two or three hours, we're sitting there with you um, and we're manning the line the entire time. So oh there is a goodness. Really good listening, <laughs> listening to that hold music. So <laughs> we're on hold a lot of our day and we spend a lot of time sitting there and waiting, including all of the, the messages that are on the line um, when we are on hold, advising that the call is on hold. Please continue to wait. Oh, you, you have to just yeah. type that out over and over again. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So your, your job ranges from being incredibly interesting to the most boring job ever sitting on hold <laughs> for hours. Oh. We, we are well versed in uh, getting used to the whole music and enjoying it. So we love it when there's a real, a real song that comes on and actually something interesting for us. It can be incredibly boring. Oh, amazing. Hey, thanks for um, sharing this behind the scenes job that I wasn't aware of and probably lots of people weren't either. No, thank you, Debbie. I really appreciate it. You know, a work as a relay officer sometimes is, you know, pretty unseen because mm. most people have never heard of us or they may have never received a call from us. So it's always so wonderful to get a call or um, be there for someone's first call from the relay service. And they go, wow, I've never heard of this service, but it's so cool. I, you know, thank you so much. Yeah, amazing. Oh, well, well done to you for being part of that. And thanks for talking to us today. Thanks, Debbie. I appreciate your time. Um, that was Jack. He's a relay officer for the National Relay Service. So there you go. If you want to check it out and perhaps refer um, somebody that you know that might be able to use that, you can uh, find out more at relayservice.gov.au. Somebody is texted through as well on 0467 842 722 to say that they did this job for many years from Melbourne and loved it. Interesting that it's now in Regional Vic, yes. And um, Sarah texted as well to say that she used the service for an interview she had to do a while ago and said it was amazing. So there you go.